I'm Caroline Wilburn, and welcome back to this week's episode of The Bat Signal. Approaching the one-year release anniversary of MGT Consulting of America's Comprehensive Review of Campus Institutions, Texas A&M has experienced a year of uncertainty and change. MGT's review recommendations laid out numerous policy proposals ranging from consolidating multiple colleges to establishing a department of journalism. These policies would be adopted, tweaked, or completely reworked in University President M. Catherine Banks' initiative, The Path Forward, released on December 14, 2021. One major recommendation in MGT's initial report was the establishment of a journalism department. Banks stated a journalism department was, quote, a significant need and overall accepted the recommendation. But she prefaced the decision required more discussion, quote, about the administrative home of this unit. On February 11th, Banks announced her vision for the future of journalism at A&M, which involved the battalion, a state-of-the-art journalism degree program, along with KAMU TV and radio, to be housed under the same roof in the proposed Performing and Fine Arts Center. Upon pushback from battalion staff members, Banks revoked her decision regarding the student newspaper and said, quote, the print portion may continue through the end of the semester. Banks has not made an official statement on the status of the battalion or the journalism department since February 11th. Beyond an established journalism department, MGT recommended A&M combine the College of Liberal Arts, the College of Science, and the College of Geosciences to create a new College of Arts and Sciences. According to the report, a College of Arts and Sciences would, quote, heighten its stature as the home of one of the largest undergraduate curricula at A&M. In her December 14th report of The Path Forward, President Banks said she was pleased with the MGT recommendation for this change. Banks accepted the recommendation and said the new college and, quote, the center point of the university would be fully functional by September 1st. Another major shift recommended to A&M was the restructuring of the libraries. In the original MGT report, investigators recommended that the libraries, rather than functioning as a separate unit, would be made a department under the new College of Arts and Sciences. From this, President Banks did not accept all recommendations, instead recommending libraries become a, quote, service unit that would, quote, no longer serve as a home for tenure-track faculty. The largest initial concerns raised by the a and community were regarding the job status of librarians, as well as how physical library resources would be managed. As Working Group 14 began working toward new contracting measures, the consultants at MGT released library-specific recommendations on May 2, 2022. As of publication, Banks accepted a proposed timeline by the working group to finalize the future structure of the university libraries by September 1, 2022, as another working group will, quote, evolve the libraries throughout the 2022-2023 school year. A full version of this story with more updates on the path forward can be found at thebat.com. For the upcoming home game against Sam Houston State this weekend, two impact counselors pulled 650 tickets for campers. Here to talk more about it is Life and Arts editor Katherine Miller. Students lined up first thing in the morning on Monday, August 29th, some starting even earlier, to pull tickets for themselves and their friends. Among them were Michael Mubarak, Petroleum Engineering Senior, and Katie Hayes, class of 2022, two impact co-chairs. Standing together in line at the ticket window for the group pulls, they held 653 sports passes between the two of them. Barrick said, though, a lot of attention was brought to the fact that they pulled over 650 tickets this year. They did something similar during the last football season. Mubarak said getting the tickets was a gradual process, so they didn't have to gather all the sports passes at once. Quote, individual camps first gather their tickets, then the freshmen gave it to their camp parents who gave it to their camp parents, Hayes said. By the time the Ziploc bags of sports passes got to him, Mubarak said 20 to 40 camps were planning on pulling tickets. Mubarak said about 90% of the people who were pulling tickets were freshmen, and since it was a group pull, all their seats are on the third deck of Kyle Field. Mubarak and Hayes called the ticket booth ahead of time, ensuring the ticketing team was ready for the massive amount of tickets they were planning on getting. Mubarak and Hayes said they did everything they could to have the process go smoothly, and even had their own calculators to keep track of the tickets. Hayes said she remembers sitting with her impact group during her first football game, and said it calmed her nerves after the, her initial anxiety about who she was going to attend the game with. Quote, I remember being like to my counselors, I just give my sports pass to you and you sort everything out for me and we could have a fun weekend. It was just super enjoyable, Hayes said. Them doing that for me, I felt really served and cared for. That's just the heart behind it. Once we get into the stadium, we're going to be a unified group. Before we are Impact, we're Aggies. At the game, we're not going to be wearing our Impact colors. We're going to be wearing all maroon, cheering on the Aggies and showing them what it means to be fighting Texas Aggie. 
Friday, September 2nd marks the last day for Student Media's beloved advisor and general manager, Douglas Pills. Here to talk more about Pills' impact on the battalion is Editor-in-Chief Michaela Rush. So after working with Student Media for about eight years now, um, Doug Pills is stepping down and he is just um, spending more time with his family, uh, even though Pills has been an incredible advisor and a just critical person to the battalion and the Aggie Line in general. Um, he's definitely somebody who is meant to be a dad. So even though we're sad he's leaving and we're going to miss him a lot, we're also super proud of him uh, for doing the right thing and for taking care of his family. Uh, we know that it's going to be really awesome for them to be together during this time. But today I just wanted to talk about Pills and how special um, he has been to not only myself, but just former generations of bat staffers, uh, especially been close with a lot of our uh, sports editors, as that's really where Pills uh, found a passion for journalism. Um, today, when I was with Pills, we were driving around, we were restocking um, some of the stands, making sure all the papers turned out nicely, and we were just talking about life for two hours, and it's very rare to have that kind of connection with somebody outside of your family, to just feel like you can talk to somebody and get their advice and trust their opinion on work things but then also you know they tell you funny stories about when they covered Bill Clinton's cat being the grand marshal of a parade like that's just not something that happens every day um and when I wrote my letter to Pills uh, a big piece of inspiration to me was his swan song which is a piece that uh, editors write right as they're about to graduate um, from a and just basically saying goodbye and thanking everyone. Um, and just reading his, even though I've read it before, made me cry, like start crying in the middle of the office because the love that he has for this place and for all the people in it, even the people who worked well before him and well after him, is just so apparent in everything he does. As seriously as he takes the paper and our success it's never at the cost of having fun and having a good relationship with us and at the end of the day even though him leaving is really hard on myself and other staffers here the fact that he has trusted us with something that I know means the world to him is one of the most important things in his life outside of his family um, that is truly one of the biggest compliments um, we can receive so just Thank you to Pills for everything you've done for me, for Brady, for Angel, for, um, you know, Chris Whitley, for everyone in between. And just thank you for helping us through probably one of the rockiest periods we've had. I don't know that we would have survived all of the challenges that have come our way just from the world, from university from other people um without you so just thank you so much for everything you do um obviously don't be a stranger not worried about that with pills but um just wanted to take some time to um talk about him and his impact uh, on student media here so yeah for a full version of Michaela's letter from the editor visit thebat.com for more information on all the stories featured in today's episode, visit our website at thebad.com or pick up a print edition on stands every Thursday. This week's contributors are myself, Catherine Miller, and Michaela Rush. This podcast is a battalion production and recorded in the KANM studios.